Right, Sunday, time for gardening. And the reason why I've got my glasses on, Mel, you sit very still there. Hello, mm -hmm. Mel Walker. Hello, Jeremy. How are we? I'm very well. Really? It's okay. When I read my computer, I have to wear glasses yeah, too. No, so no. don't feel bad. You're just not eating enough carrots. Oh, don't you start on me. Just <laughs> today. Okay. Thank you guys for your questions. You're quite welcome to send them in to us, um, to, the, uh, to the website. It'll run on the, the ticker tape underneath us. Yeah. Let's get straight into it. Um, oh, oh, this one I loved. Mm -hmm. Okay, this this is somebody who doesn't want everything. They just want everything. Okay. Oh, I get I get a lot of those in some <laughs> of the questions. I'm like, we don't have enough money to actually employ a garden designer. So here are the questions I've got. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, do you understand that I studied this for years and years and years, and I charge for this information? Okay, just bear that in mind. <laughs> okay, I want to plant colourful plants that bloom in all seasons and have a scent. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's easy. There isn't one. <laughs> you see, there isn't one. Now, this is a question that people want flowers, the same flower that will keep on blooming the entire way through the year. They don't. There are some agapanthus now, which um, they've been breeding up at the aloe farm. Uh, I know it's aloes, but he also plays with agapanthus. Mm -hmm. And um, they will go to maybe 10 months of the year. But of course, your aggies don't really have a scent. Okay, you will have some roses. I've seen some roses that are still flowering at the moment. And we're, of course, we're going into pruning time. Always first or second week of August is when I will prune my roses. And a lot of the roses you can keep going for quite a long time during the year and they will have a scent. But there is literally no flower that does it. it flowers have their own time for doing things. It's like the, the pink jasmine, which is the jasminum. Gone blank on the... It's... it's Ribrigatum. That thing, yeah, the pink jasmine, the one that comes out first in spring, that one will only be out for maybe, what, a, a month? That is the f earliest flowering of the jasmines, okay? Then you get the Trachylospermum, which is the, <laughs> he's going to look at me, star <laughs> jasmine. That flowers for a lot longer, but it comes afterwards, and it's also got a very heady scent. So sure, you get a lot of plants that have got a lot of scent, but none of them are going to flower right. all the time. Oh, yeah. And it's the same thing, I mean, if you look at something like everybody's been going crazy for peonies, and they're like, why isn't my peony flowering again? It's August, I mean, it's um, October. Well, peonies only flower for one month. So you will need to have something else to take the place of the other things that you have so that you will have color and that you will have scent the entire way through the year. No one quick fix. I like that question. It's easy to answer. Yeah, right. What's right. next? A uh, question from Kozula Natal. What plants are suitable for a small, indigenous, water-wise, coastal garden? Well, in, in KZN, mm. when it's on the coast, obviously you need to go for plants which are able to handle salt-laden air. Um, I would say that if you want to go water-wise, the best thing to always look at are plants that have got little little filaments or hairs on them, mm -hmm. um, all that are grey, because those are ones that are specifically developed now to actually deal with drought conditions. So if you look at your Arctotus, which is one of the little kind of daisy-type flowers, they've got the grey leaves and they come in the yellow or the orange, and if it's not sunny, they close up. Okay. Okay. Right. Those ones are fantastic as a ground cover for the coast. Strelitzia, absolutely wonderful. I mean, if you, there, there is such a host of plants that you can give people, but you have to think about the different areas. Palms. I mean, what would you do without a banana palm if you're living down at the coast, mm. honestly? Mm. So my rule of thumb has always been to say to people, and I think I say this every single time, is go to the local nursery or garden center in your area. Go and have a look and see what they're selling. Then drive around your area and go and have a look what people have got that are in their gardens that look good. Okay, because, and, the, and then make sure when you're driving past at another time that they're not watering all the time. Please get plants that you don't have to water all the time. And especially in the coastal region in KZN, I mean, you, it's so tropical or subtropical there. You don't really need to water all that much. No. The other one, of course, Frangipani. Mm. Oh, yes, Putting the fringe of penny, um, I have seen some plants down there that might get up to maybe a meter or two here in Johannesburg, like the September bells, which and is absolutely beautiful. These ones just and they're like three, on. four meters tall. It's checking the fringe of stalk. Yeah. 
So, but whenever you go around and you're driving around, can I just say to people down in the KZ and South Coast, if you see any lantana growing or the Port Jackson fir pines, please just pull them out. They are really getting quite Vegas. hectic down on the yeah. South Coast specifically. Anyway, that was just beside the point, but just a little bit of information. Right. Okay, now, um, next one. Mm. Um, to George. And I'm not talking about George the city, I'm talking about George the to person. George? No, George the person. Oh. Yes. Hi, Mel. Hi, I think, George. I think George is trying to hit on you, Mel. <laughs> he says, love your funky hairstyle. No, sure he does not. Yes, he does. Um, can you give me some options for mature, fast-growing, screening trees? Mm -hmm. I can. So I, I, I would imagine he's talking about trees that you would plant on the edge of a border or something. So, yeah, so we you, want to screen the you know what they say the hedge, neighbors. Yeah, good hedges make good neighbors. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to look, I mean, anything in nature takes time, and gardening does take time because you have to think about anything to do with garden design. Comes, it's not a three dimensional thing; it's a four dimensional thing because with gardening, time is your fourth dimension, and any tree is going to take time to grow. Okay, I planted in my tiny little back garden, 10 trees when they were my height. And 10 years later, trust me, I have a forest in my back garden. Mm -hmm. So you're not, unless you're buying in big trees mm -hmm. for immediate effect, okay, and planting those, and that costs a lot God, of money. I was going to say, that costs. Yeah, that costs a lot of money, especially yeah. if it's your back garden and, and you don't really have a through route to the back garden. Um, there are certain trees that will grow a little bit faster than others, but you need to also just have a look and see what they have in your area. So it, it depends also on what size tree. I mean, I've had to go for the smaller trees. So something like a, a Nuxia, uh, and is it, does he say indigenous or? Uh, didn't say. Didn't oh, say. Yeah, no, no, it did for a small in, no, 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 that was the other one. Okay, so um, yeah. olive trees are notoriously slow. Everybody says, oh, put in an olive tree. But what you've also got to remember is that they can get pretty big. And not only that, you don't want to plant them too close to a wall because their root system, especially with the wild olive, um, can actually damage the foundations of your walls. So don't go for that. There are so many. I love um, the what were called Rus, which are now called Searsia, the curry, the white curry. Um, I find it perfect for a small garden, and it will work well pretty much anywhere in the country. It is indigenous, and it also puts out um, this wonderful kind of fruit which birds love mm. and, and comes out during towards the end of winter when you might not have anything in your garden. Another one, a little slower growing, um, which is also indigenous, would be the Heteropexis natalensis. Um, not a fast grower. Um, it's a natal lavender, but these leaves smell amazing. They can get quite big, but I have it in a small garden. Fast growing, you know, there's nothing really that's fast growing. If you want something to screen immediately, I would say put bamboo in. Because that, but <laughs> that'll get Ooh, really big. Yes, but jeepers. but you need to keep it contained. You need to actually put down yeah. something and keep um, like uh, corrugated iron on either side so it doesn't spread absolutely everywhere. Friend, keep it under friend of mine had bamboo down at the bottom of his garden, and when he tried to get it out, yeah. I mean, it took because that that structure yeah, underneath it, it is it goes. You have to contain bizarre. it. But then you can use pittosporum viburnum. Those are the two that you can use as screening. Put them up as hedges and they will grow pretty much faster than anything else anywhere in the country um, and get up to a height within a couple of years. That now, would be useful. Now, I'm going to interrupt you mm. there because there's another question here that I picked up on. Mm. Um, and it'll have to be our last one. Now, I bought, because you've just mentioned viburnum, whatever mm. that is. So, um, sweet I laurel. Bought, I bought sweet viburnum sinensis. Mm. Please advise how far I should plant this from a wall so well, I don't damage <clears throat> it. This is one of the biggest things is that you have to look at the size of the plant, the crown. Um, when they say, you know, you always have two measurements, how tall it'll get and how wide it gets. Right. Now, when you look at the crown of the plant and where, mm. where the branches get out to, um, where the drip line is, that's basically where your roots are getting to as well. Okay. Now, everybody says, is it, a, is it a single rooted or does it have lateral roots? Trust me, they all have both. Okay, the only thing that really has 
just a taproot, will be your parsnips and your carrots. Everything else might have a taproot to hold it in, but the lateral roots are the ones that all plants, all trees will send out because they need to go and get nutrients. Mm -hmm. The stabilizing one is the taproot. Tap root. Okay. okay. So yeah. you need to find out how far those roots are going to go. You can always mm -hmm. just go online and say, is this tree, does it have invasive roots? I mean, if you look at jacarandas, they get into the sewage systems, they pull up walls, driveways. So always check that out, whatever tree it is that you're finding. But rule of thumb, try never to grow closer than, I'd say, one, one and a half meters to a wall. So it's like social distancing for plants. For social trees. distancing. Just pretend they've got COVID. Okay, and, and the same thing goes for planting next to your pool. Stop it. He always gets like this. You know, what, do you think I'm a dumb blonde or something? No, it's just the way you express yourself sometimes. <laughs> But it's the same thing, pool. Is it going to um, damage my pool's foundations? Well, if you plant it a meter away from your pool, pretty much, yeah, I reckon so. It's going <laughs> to smash it straight out. So don't plant them too close to the edges unless you're taking the wall down of a, a, a boundary wall um, and creating a hedge instead. But just find out what the, I'm not going to say girth, the actual width of the tree is. You see, I can make him smile, hey? <laughs> You've got such a bad mind, I mean, really, Jeremy. But that is the way to look at it. Um, and, and just say to, when you're buying the tree from somebody, how invasive is the root system? So if you're putting in a rock fig, think what rock figs do when they're growing. In fact, a lot of your ficus varieties, they grow on rocks. On rocks they yeah. crack rocks open. So what do you think it's going to do to your foundations? There we go. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Jeremy. Have a wonderful week. I indeed shall go forth and do so. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie Walker, our little green-fingered guru right here on Mansfield today. Thank you for joining us. We'll catch you on The Gardening Show again next week Sunday. Bye-bye. Take care.